Hey everybody, it's Amy Berger from TuaNutrition.com bringing you once again keto without the crazy. Um, you are probably getting really sick of this outfit. Um, I think I mentioned in, in the previous videos that I'm recording many videos on one day um, just so I can start building a bigger stockpile. And I'm frankly just too lazy to change my shirt. Um, even though all I would have to do is change my shirt, I don't even have to change my pants because you can't see me from the waist down. Um, but anyway, that is neither here nor there. Hopefully you're not super sick of the outfit and there's a chance that I will intersperse these videos with other ones. So um, you're either gonna see this outfit like four times in a row or you'll just see it a lot more frequently than anyone should ever wear one outfit. Um, today's topic, moving along, today's topic is salt and specifically what kind of salt is best for keto. The issue of how much salt you need on keto is a separate issue and it's a bigger issue and it's a kind of a bigger issue that I'm prepared to tackle right now. Um, I'm going to link to a post by Stephen Finney um, from Verta Health and I mean Dr. Finney has been researching ketogenic diets almost longer than I've been on the planet. Um, I think that he had papers come out at least as early as 1983. And I was born in 78. So, um, you know, when I was just a little wee one, he was already publishing on ketogenic diets. So um, he, he has some uh, interesting information on salt. I will link to that. And, you know, beyond that, it's, it's really individual how much salt you need. So I'm really going to kind of leave that for another time. And we're going to talk about the kind of salt that is best. Um, what kind of salt is best for keto? Salt, sodium chloride. Um, and, and I should clarify, when I say salt, I mean sodium chloride, and that's kind of chemically irresponsible of me because in chemistry, in the science chemistry, the word salt is not what we think of as table salt. You could have an ammonium salt, a, a whatever, a potassium salt, a all kinds of salts, all kinds of, it's just a sort of molecular structure kind of a thing, molecular bonding kind of a thing. So when a chemist says the word salt, they don't mean table salt, sodium chloride. I do. So I am going to use them interchangeably, even though they're really not. But so what kind of salt do you need? You need sodium chloride and you can get sodium chloride in any salt you like. Regular cheap table salt, the Morton's iodized salt, fancy schmancy Himalayan pink salt, red salt, black salt, gray salt, smoked salt, whatever kind of salt you like has sodium chloride. And what you really need is the sodium chloride, probably the sodium more so than the chloride, but you do need the chloride as well. Um, and my advice as to what type of salt to use is use whichever one you like. Now, um, I, I'm going to show you some of the ones that I have here. I, I'm kind of a little disappointed. I don't have my favorite one on hand. Um, I, I ran out of it and I haven't replaced it in a long time because I had, you'll see, I have this huge collection of other salt that I've gotten from elsewhere for free from conferences and stuff as little gifts. So um, <clears throat> I just don't really need to, to replace the salt yet. But let's, let's talk about why, um, why you don't really need the fancy stuff, right? Um, or, or let's talk about some of the concerns first. I think the main concern about salt quality on keto and, and let's, you know, I'm, I'm going to have one of my cough drops. This is still post Denver flu, still March 15th recording day. Um, <laughs> the main concern about salt quality is that there was some concern that the pure white table salt is pure and white because it's bleached. Um, it may, it has like anti caking agents in it to prevent it from getting um, clumpy and stuck in the shaker. So, you know, I understand that concern. If you're concerned about that, buy a fancy salt that doesn't have that. Um, or the, you know, the other concerns, I guess, I guess there's concerns about contaminants or something. Um, <coughs> I think, the other reason why people may opt for certain other sort of unrefined salts is that those unrefined salts 
will still contain trace amounts of other minerals. So whereas a Morton salt is just sodium chloride or like a regular table salt at a restaurant is just sodium chloride, when you use one of these sort of higher end salts, you may be getting very, very trace amounts of magnesium, maybe calcium, iron, copper. But here's the thing, and this is why I think you really don't have to go out of your way to buy the fancy schmancy salt with that stuff in it. We're talking minuscule, minuscule, minute amounts of those trace elements. If you are relying on salt, on your fancy salt, to be the primary source of those minerals in your diet, and I'm not talking about the sodium and chloride, I'm talking about the magnesium and calcium and um, you know potassium and, and copper and iron. And if you are relying on your salt to be the primary source of that in your diet, please hire a nutritionist, please hire somebody who can help you out of that because again, I made a joke about this in a previous video, you're doing it wrong. Um, now, there's nothing wrong, there, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with using those salts if you want to, but use them because you like them. Don't use them because like, oh well, this one has more copper, or this has more magnesium. We're talking about the most tiny, tiny amounts um, of those things. So my favorite salt, the one that I don't have on hand to show you is called Redmond's. Redmond's Real Salt, R-E-D-M-O-N-D-S. And that one, you actually can see the flex. It's, it's white, but it's also got pink crystals in it and red and it's, it's, it's iron, it's whatever else is in it. You can actually see that it's like a mixture of, it's more than just sodium chloride. Um, I'm gonna explain why I like it after I walk you through some of this other stuff. This is another one of my favorites. It's the um, Celtic Sea Salt from Selena Naturally. I think that's the name of the brand. Um, this is the fine ground. They make um, a coarse one that's just coarser, that's better kind of for cooking and stuff like that. It's pretty gray. It might be kind of hard to see on the video. It's a little grayish, but I have the same, from the same brand, that's Selena Naturally, um, Makai Pure Deep Sea Salt, M-A-K-A-I, Makai. And you can see that this is very white. And again, from the same brand, Selena Naturally Celtic, Celtic Sea Salt, this is their light gray. This is the coarse one, but so you can see how gray it is, right? If you compare the gray to the white, you can see they're noticeably different. Um, and I even have same brand, Selena Naturally Celtic. This is their pink salt, like pink, pink against the white. So here's the thing though. Well, and I, I will also, I have this, this one I bought myself. This is, um, I have to look at my my camera orientation. This is, <coughs> this is Morton's. This is light salt, which is half um, half sodium and half potassium chloride. So this is great for ketogenic diets because it does give you a fair amount of potassium. I know I was just saying some of the other salts, it's like teeny tiny amounts. It's not really true of this because this actually provides you a fair bit of potassium. Um, in a quarter teaspoon, which is not that much for a ketogenic diet, a quarter teaspoon of this Morton's Light Salt has 350 milligrams of potassium, which is not bad. And this is iodized. So this has the iodine. It gives you 60 micrograms of iodine per quarter teaspoon, which depending on your um, opinion, 60 micrograms of iodine is plenty or it's nothing. I think the RDA is 150 micrograms right now. There's a lot of functional medicine practitioners who think that that's ridiculously low. They basically think everybody everywhere should be taking massive doses of iodine. I don't agree. I think there's some issues with that. Um, some people probably can really benefit from iodine. Some people don't. So that's a separate issue. Um, I just wanted to show you that like, I have all these different kinds of salts, but here's the thing. Um, I like this one because it does give me a little bit of potassium, but I get potassium from food. I get it from meat. I get it from vegetables. Um, so this isn't my primary source of potassium, but if, if you have to get sodium and potassium on a ketogenic diet anyway, you might as well get this and have it together. This, um, this is fairly inexpensive. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I've had it for a while, but, um, 
There's another brand that's called New Salt, I think, N-U-S-A-L-T, and that's just potassium chloride. It doesn't have sodium. I don't like it. I find it unpalatable. I think it's not good. So, you know, if you're looking for potassium, use, use the light salt maybe, or just eat more potassium rich foods. What I wanted to explain about all of these sort of fancy pink salt and the gray salt and the Makai salt, the only reason I have these is because I got them for free at a conference. Um, part of them were in my gift bag because I was a speaker and it was just a little gift to the speakers. Um, one of them I think somebody just gave to me in passing. I probably would not have bought these randomly. Um, and you can see, I mean, these two, two of them are still sealed. There's only so much salt I use. I'm, I'm one person every now and then I cook for friends, but um, this, this bag, this bag I did by myself because they sold it at um, a farm. I used to work at a farm in Southern Maryland called P.A. Bowen Farmstead. It's owned by Sally Fallon, who's the owner of the Weston A. Price Foundation. They make raw milk cheese there. Um, they sell all kinds of super high quality food. They do pastured pork, grass fed beef, um, soy free and corn free eggs, which are extremely hard to find. Anyway, top quality food. We happen to sell this at the farm. So, you know, I would pick up a bag of it every now and then. Um, and it still, still has that much left in it. Like a bag this size, this is a pound. This will last me a long time. So even, even if you buy an expensive salt, I think, I think that at the farm we sold this for $10. $10 for a pound of salt, maybe that sounds like a lot. This lasts forever. I, I can't tell you how many months I've had this. So it's kind of a small price to pay for a salt that, you know, is, is nicer. But the reason I use this salt and the reason I like the Redmond Real Salt, it's called Redmond's Real Salt, the reason I use these is not because they're fancy schmancy and it's gray Celtic salt and like, or, or because it has more copper. Literally, the reason I use them is because I think they taste better. I like the taste better. And maybe some people don't notice a difference with different kind of salt, but I'm kind of a foodie. I love cooking. I love reading cookbooks. I love food shopping even, um, as long as there's no like screaming children in the supermarket. But um, I just like, I like the way they taste. They have more kind of a milder flavor. There's not as biting of like, whoa, that's salt. It's sort of enhances flavors rather than just making things salty. Um, it, it's going to sound weird, but you, you cooks will know what I'm saying when I say this. Salt helps things taste more like themselves. It brings out natural flavors that are there. It enhances the flavor rather than just saltifying rather than just making things salty um so really truly when you're on a ketogenic diet eat whatever salt you like and i know some people who would even get like a little travel size like this and keep it in their purse so they have it with them at all times at restaurants or you could even get like a little just vial or something like use an old an empty um medication bottle with like a you know a leak proof top a, a child proof cap keep that in your purse with your favorite salt and it's super easy to travel with um i'm about to tell you how old i am right now even though you all know because i've mentioned it in previous videos but i have a one of those little containers from film you know the little like 35 mil i think it's 35 millimeter i don't know the little round film cartridges that you used to have to like mail away from the drugstore to get your pictures developed and they would come back to you like a week later or two weeks later it wasn't like you could take it on your phone and then it was on the internet everywhere um i have one of those little film containers with salt that i keep in my purse and i 99 percent of the time forget i have it so i'm not a food snob at all i have zero problem using whatever salt shaker is on the table at the restaurant. Like, I don't care. Um, if you do care, you know, get yourself a little container and, and bring your, your fancy special salt. But really, on the ketogenic diet, the answer to what kind of salt you need is sodium chloride salt, period. Um, use whichever one you like. Use whichever one you can afford because it really doesn't matter. Um, let's see. Some people might disagree with me. I, and again, I'm not saying that it's irrelevant 
to have slight trace amounts of more minerals and salt. I mean, if you're gonna have salt anyway, you might as well get some extra trace minerals with it. But if it's not in your budget, if literally an extra four or five dollars for salt is gonna make or break you, then don't do it. Just get your regular salt, no big deal. Um, I'm gonna end this soon. I thought I had more to say, but um, I do wanna recommend the book, The Salt Fix by James D. Nicola Antonio. Um, I have um, co-authored an article with Dr. D. Nicola Antonio. In fact, I have to thank him. He um, was a co-author on my very first published peer-reviewed journal article. So I have him to thank for my very first, you know, appearance in the scientific literature. Um, and it, it was not an article about salt, it was about sugar actually, about added sugars. But anyway, I, I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have a lot of respect for James, but I don't agree with him about everything. He's um, written some stuff in some books subsequently after this book that I don't fully agree with, but that doesn't mean that I can't respect the work that I respect. And this book is absolutely phenomenal. If um, somebody called, I think it was my friend Eric Sotokoff, who's a doctor that I know from Twitter and I've met him in person at this point. Um, I think it was him, it may have been somebody else. <coughs> somebody said the, the salt fix was like the big fat surprise of salt, right? If you've read Nina Teicholz's book, The Big Fat Surprise, that sort of blew the lid off all the, myth, the, the mythology and all the bullshit on saturated fat being bad for you. And it was all about butter and meat and cheese and how that's all really good for us. So James does sort of the same investigative work on salt here. Um, if, even if you've been on a ketogenic diet for a while and you still, for whatever reason, have lingering doubts about salt and you feel like, oh, there's no way all the salt can be good for me. Um, you know, it's gonna raise my blood pressure, this and that. I really encourage you to read the book because it's, um, it's just really, really educational. Um, I think, I think humans can consume a lot more salt than most of us do. Um, I mentioned in my video on ApoE4 that most people are not sodium sensitive hypertensives, meaning most of us can eat a ton of salt and our blood pressure does nothing. It doesn't move. Um, there are some people though, who do need to be careful. If you are taking certain medications, you need to be careful about sodium. Uh, of course, most blood pressure medications are being taken to treat hyperinsulinemia, which is the main driver of hypertension. So it's not the salt, it's the sugar. But regardless, you know, just to be safe, <clears throat> if you have hypertension, if you um, are on certain medications, if you have a heart failure, uh, something like that, check with a keto savvy doctor or a keto savvy nutritionist who can help you figure out the level of salt that's safe for you and that's right for you. Um, and don't forget, you know, salt doesn't only come from like added salt on keto. We love and celebrate foods that are made with salt or that are naturally salty things like, um, bacon, sausage, salami, prosciutto, olives, um, feta cheese. Most cheese is very salty, uh, beef jerky. So delicious stuff, plenty of room for salt on keto absolutely no need to be afraid of salt um yeah i guess that's it for now um stay salty see you next time